As any good philosopher would, you may have asked yourself in the comments, what's the difference between the various revolvers that we have? So like any good philosopher would, I'm going to answer those questions for you. Today, while I was perusing the comments section, I noticed the question, what is the difference between the various revolvers that we have? Specifically, uh, all the V3s, I would assume, because that's what we offer at this point. So I'd like to do a video on that. And uh, TLDR, too long, didn't watch. TLDW? Whatever. You know what I mean. If you want the quick summary, it is that the shorter motors are smaller motors and the bigger motors, the longer motors or bigger motors. And the larger that the motor is, the more torque density it's going to have, the more power density it's going to have, the more drag brake it's going to have, and the better hold it's going to have. Is that four or three? I forget how many points that was. Um, so th that's the basics of it. But I, I would talk more specifically about these models. So let's just kind of dive into it. I am showing you, at least on the bench, the old uh, V2 style versus our new V3 housing. Performance wise, uh, let's just assume that I'm talking about V3s and I actually had V3s off the shelf that I brought with me today, but I didn't. Uh, so we're going to just assume on that. But let's talk about the V2 versus the V3 anyway, because there are subtle differences. On the V3, I added more back iron to it. And this was primarily so that we would have better drag brake and torque density on all the models. Because as we move forwards with technology, the ESCs are actually getting better and better at starting motors slower. So I can give the motors more torque and make it to where it's kind of harder to start up. You've, you've tried to spin the shaft of a motor before. And in the past, and still today, when a motor is easier to turn over by hand, it's going to start up easier on most ESCs. So, uh, you know, a Castle ESC, a Tekken ESC, a uh, Hobbywing ESC, all of your traditional six step style ESCs. That is going to make a smoother starting motor when the motor physically is easier to turn by hand. So, the balance of that or the foil to that is that when we increase the back iron, we increase our magnet strength. And when we increase our magnet strength, um, Maybe I said that wrong. The magnets themselves don't actually get stronger, but the magnetic coupling gets stronger. And so the magnets become more efficient in doing their job. When we increase that, <laughs> it makes it to where it generally will make it harder to start up. And between the V2 and the V3, there is a perceptible difference for me when I'm using a Castle ESC. The V3 doesn't quite start as smooth, but the increase in drag brake and torque density and hold brake for me was definitely worth the change. So that's what I did for the V3 housing. Now that I have completely talked about something aside from our video today, let's talk about the actual differences between our various models. Uh, but what I wanted to get the point across is, is that small changes to a design can affect things more than what I'm going to talk about today. But what I'm going to talk about today is the difference in sizes between the models. We have our standard 540. It has a 20, mil 20 millimeter long stator. We have our Snubnose 540. It has a 10 millimeter long stator. And then we have our super stubby team spec. We call it SS team spec. And it has an eight millimeter long stator. And of course, as you can see, big, medium, large size in the motors. And the reason why I did the eight millimeter long stator on the SS team spec was so that we could get it literally as light as possible while still being enough motor to perform in the average crawler, especially in a comp scene. Cause in a comp scene, they're going to be lighter. Typically you're going to fall between, oh, about four pounds and five and a half pounds. And you can totally gear this exactly where you want it. You're not going to have overheating problems, et cetera, et cetera. But for the average user, on the Snubnose 540, I stuck with a 10 millimeter stator for a very specific reason. And that is that a lot of these rigs today, people put a lot of weight on them. And the 10 millimeter stator is 20% more stator than our SS team spec, right? So that's 20% more torque. That's 20% more power handling. And for any given load, that is more or less going to run 20% cooler. So I stuck with the 10 millimeter stator on that model because specifically I wanted to be able to say, Hey, you can pretty much run this on any rig and I don't have to give you a lot of information about that. You simply select whichever KV is going to work for your wheel speed and voltage needs. And then you gear it appropriately for a crawler. And that's really enough that that's all you got to do. So the 540 model is uh, twice as powerful as our 
normal snub nose. It's got twice the amount of stator. And as you can see, it, it's definitely a longer motor. It's 10 millimeters longer. The stator's 10 millimeters longer. Not a surprise there, maybe. So this one was our elegant overkill. And the reason why we even offer this is because some people, maybe they want to have a 20 pound rig, uh, a lot of, just a lot of weight on it. Something that's going to be way outside your typical, I bolted on a lot of stuff and it's eight pounds or nine pounds. It, it's, uh, you know, and even if you do have an eight or nine pound rig, maybe you want more drag brake and hold brake and torque and et cetera. So the elegant overkill option is where the 540 comes in. This is something that technically you can throw in a two speed. You can throw it into a tow rig. You can, you can do practically anything that you want to with a 540 size. And as long as you're not over geared to the point of, you know, I want my crawler to go, let's say 20 miles an hour and you're running in second gear all the time, then there's really no problem. So when we just make the assumption of this is going into a crawler and you're going to be crawling, then it is pretty much always elegant overkill. It is more weight than the rest of them, of course. It's still far lighter than a standard in-runner style 540 or a brushed 540 or any of those. Uh, so you're still gonna save weight, you're still gonna save space, and for your average build, even in a in, in like a, a low center of gravity build, like this Titan that I'm currently working on, you know, the, the frame rails themselves, uh, honestly, they probably designed this to fit a 540, but you can see I've got the team spec in there right now, and there's just miles of room but we could definitely throw in this full size 540. We would be lighter than your normal brushed motor. So let's say you're going from a sealed can. There was a sealed can in this uh, that I built the kit from or that I'm building the kit off of. Uh, so we're gonna be dropping weight on the chassis. We are gonna have you know massive torque increase, massive, massive torque increase if you use the standard 540 size uh, as compared to your normal brushed motor. And, and so even then, elegant overkill, it's heavier than it needs to be. It's got more torque than you need by a, a huge margin. Um, I, I wish I could remember the numbers off the top of my head, but if I recall correctly, speed to speed compared on a brushed motor, so uh, let's say 1400 kV version compared to like a, a 35 turn motor, they're gonna be about the same speed. On the snub nose version, you would have three times the amount of torque as your standard sealed can 540. And on the standard 540, you're gonna have six times the amount of torque produced. And, and there's no problems with the normal brushed motor. So as maybe the illustration that I'm telling you will convey, it is a lot more motor than you need. And I like that as an option. That is why we have it. We wouldn't, we don't need to have that technically. We could only have the smaller ones and everybody would be fine. But I like to have that just elegant overkill. That way you can kind of throw it at anything. You can select the cave that you want based on the voltage and the wheel speed that you want and the gear down you want to use. Um, and there you go. So maybe that was a much longer answer. <laughs> I kind of got into the weeds on some of this, but that's, that's really how it breaks down. We have our occasionally offered SS team specs. Currently we do have the silvers in the stock. We did offer purples as you saw on that rig and the purples sold out within a couple of days, but we do still have silvers. So if you want that ultra lightweight, the option is currently there. We always carry the snub noses and all the popular KVs. We always carry the 540s and all the popular KVs. And so you can really just make those choices. You know, do you want to just shave a little bit of weight and have a huge increase in torque, you know, a six fold over your standard ready to run motor? Do you want to have a three fold increase in torque over your regular ready to run motor? Or do you want to have something that's like a 250% increase, which is still, still plenty. Uh, so that, that's basically it. And to uh, recap what I would do on my choices, if I want a rig that just holds in place without me touching the throttle, let's say, then I'm going to go for the bigger motor. That's always going to be your best choice. The bigger the motor, the more drag brake, the more hold brake, like I've said a few times in this video. So if I'm looking for something, uh, even in a comp setting, that I want to be able to drive up onto a, a rock wall and then just have it sit and hold itself, then the bigger the motor, the better. And this goes across the board. It doesn't matter what motor we're talking about, what brand, what size, what diameter, you know, what KV, it doesn't matter. The bigger motor is always gonna have more hold to it. And a lot of times you do sacrifice a little bit of startup, but not enough that most people are gonna notice. Um, if you don't need that, if you don't need the ability to hold without rolling back or you know giving a little bit of throttle, then our next step down the snub nose is 
totally a fine option. And for the majority of people, it seems that the snub nose is becoming more popular. It does go in waves back and forth, but people are kind of getting off of that super heavy rig and going back to the lighter weight rigs. So instead of having a nine pound rig, you have, you know, a four and a half or five pound rig. It's a lot easier on parts. You don't break them nearly as much. Uh, just a, a heavier rig always breaks more parts. It doesn't matter if you're, you're tumbling down a rock wall or, you know, if you're just kind of sitting there hopping and giving it throttle when you probably shouldn't, you're going to break more parts. You're going to break more drivetrain the heavier that the rig is. So my gut reaction is that we're probably seeing a trend away from the super heavy, to tell you the truth, TRX4 with a bunch of bolt-ons sort of phase. And now we're getting into people running trucks like the Element, the Enduro, and they, they come light out of the box and they're just super nimble. So people are kind of cluing in on this and saying, you know, maybe I don't want to add too much weight, maybe just a little brass on front, give me my forward weight bias, maybe a little bit of weighted wheels to get my forward weight bias, but not too much. You know, you go too far and it ends up causing more problems. So the snub nose for almost all builds is, is going to work. And then of course, the SS team spec, especially if you want to be competition oriented or if you're kind of a motor snob and you really just want the smallest, lightest, smoothest that you can get with, you know, nice thin wires, shave as many grams as you want. That's why that is offered here and there. And it's kind of, kind of nice having these as uh, you know, a, a once yearly sort of thing, because I can flex a little bit more on my design and, uh, you know, I can do things that we wouldn't normally roll in maybe as quickly to our normal version. For instance, you know, the V3 that's out right now, it's going to be out for a long time. I see absolutely no reason to change our V3. However, if or when I do an SS team spec for next year, then I've got some magnetics ideas that I would like to try. So I'll prototype those in the meantime. And then, you know, six months, nine months, 12 months from now or whatever, when it actually rolls out, I will have even more experience in my prototyping and I'll be able to kind of choose and select from some new models. And if it is actually, you know, that great of a of change, then down the road, that may get rolled into the V4. If we do a V4 at some point on the revolvers, which I'm not saying that we are, but just saying it's kind of nice having these, you know, short releases so that I can play around, do a lot heavier prototyping leading up to them and just figure out some new stuff. So yeah, kind of talked your ear off on that one. This is kind of a fun topic for me and really good question in the comments. So I do appreciate y'all putting the comments in for sure. Let me know what size you prefer on these and also what KV you like uh, and what voltage on top of that. So what size do you like? What KV do you like? And what voltage do you like to run? That will actually help me in the future. I like that sort of feedback. And uh, yeah, put your questions down below. If you got any questions uh, that we can make into a video, I would love to hear them because this one was an awesome video for me. I like talking about this. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.